just keep the stuff out of your head, decide what most has your attention, decide desired outcomes, next actions to move on those, and just stay engaged and stay involved. You did not only invent GTD and, 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 and build this operating principle for personal productivity, but also you created a company which became a global company and now it's a self-running, very healthy global company. What did you learn from your experience of building this company from the entrepreneurial side, which is informed by GTD, by GTD and what, what would you do maybe different or what would you say people, hey, this time, this was very important and this is what I would do differently? Well, I'm not, <clears throat> Simon, I'm not really an entrepreneur, even that aspirational. I'm more of an educator, you know, and a researcher than, than any of that. It just turns out that because the world kept coming at us to say, okay, how do we do this? And trying to figure out how do we manage partnerships and technology to help build the distribution of this educational model to the world. So that's a lot of what I've been involved in and, and how I've been doing that. So I don't know that I have any big keys for entrepreneurs in, in that way. I, I work with many, 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 you know, over all these years, you know, in all this game. And it's all about the same stuff. Just keep the stuff out of your head, decide what most has your attention, decide desired outcomes, next actions to move on those, and just stay engaged and stay involved. So there's, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have any magic formula, no magic pill. Otherwise, I'd make it probably a lot more money than I'm making if I did. But, you know, it's just about where are you going? You know, I, you know, our mission is to create a world where there are no problems, only projects. And so you know, the, the, the vision of that is to make sure that we've reached as many people in the world that we could that might be interested in this technology. And then hand them the tools to be able to deliver that from a training or a coaching and a consulting standpoint. So that's a lot of the last 15 years of my work. We actually reduced our company from 50 people to five simply because we became a more intellectual property um, licensing company than a, than a training company in the U.S. We found a great partner in the U.S., so they were able to take over a lot of that for us. So now I'm just, my job is basically just supporting all of our licensees and partners around the world that we've certified to train this and coach this and serve them as best I can so that their businesses are successful. So the mission is to create a world where problems are projects. Beautiful. And uh, how would you rate uh, yourself? Did you, did you accomplish the goal? Oh, no, come on. You know, I, if we have a percent of a percent of a percent of a percent of the world that we've trained to think this way, I'd say, wait, success. So, you know, I, again, I'm 74, so uh, I don't know, by the time I die, I don't know how much of a dent I will have made in the world, but we have actually, we've seen that people who get what it is, this GTD methodology, they start to, they start to engage with their world so that whatever they consider a problem turns into a project that they get on the driver's seat about handling. And I say, God, that's just a great thing. Everybody improves their life with this methodology no matter how, to what degree they implement it. So I say, you know, I've been very graced to be, you know, given the opportunity to have that as my life and my career. Beautiful. Uh, how many things do you have today on your calendar? On my calendar? Not too much. You know, come on, the world has slowed down. <laughs> you know, I'm just, all I'm doing are podcasts and interviews now virtually and virtual meetings because I'm not going out anywhere. So, uh, Calendar's pretty light, but things like this with you. So that's a lot of what my work is. Cool, because currently many are thinking if they should go for the philosophy or of a simple calendar, an empty calendar, uh, no hard landscape, avoiding hard at, at all costs and having it free. And on the other side, there's people who say, the more structure I have, the more I get into my flow and into my zone, otherwise I'm lost. 
What's your experience? Both. I'd say that's up to each individual to decide what works for them, what gets you into your flow. I like to structure as little as I can, just follow my intuitive hunches about whatever it is I feel like I want to do and, and feel like doing. And, you know, with external commitments, there's my hard landscape, you know, to make sure those, those are handled. But otherwise, I like to be as free as I can. The folks who need that kind of structure, sorry, the world's not going that way. <laughs> it's not, you know, you're going to have to manage yourself. It's going to be a virtual, virtual world. I mean, we knew this was going to be a virtual world anyway. We didn't know it was going to be wrapped up like it is right now with the coronavirus. But we knew that, that everyone's just going to have to manage themselves. And we're, the technologies, come on, look, you know, I'm talking to each other and, you know, and around the world, we can do this now. So we have the technology, uh, you know, to be able to manage a global world with all kinds of great conversations, decisions, and, and work being done in a virtual way. We're still going to need the physical. So be glad when that's all kind of, put to bed, you know, in a few months and we can go back to somewhat normal in terms of, you know, engaging with, um, you know, uh, real time events and, and people getting together. Uh, but meanwhile, Hey, there's some lessons to be learned. Clean a drawer, clean up your old in basket, clean up your old stuff, you know, that's been lying around, you know, take advantage of the, of the, the downtime that you've got, right now to clean up a lot of the backlog of things you've probably let been mounting up around your apartment or your house or where you've been living and as, as well as your, your work stuff. You know, clean up your email. Jeez. You know, it's, uh, so it's time for cleanup. You know, when the world's not pressing at you and you have to then be offline, take advantage of offline. A lot of cool things to do because there are a lot of cool things coming toward you that you'll be feel much better dealing with those when your offline has been cleaned up. Beautiful, David. Thank you so much. I hope we can have this conversation again in one year. Sure, yeah. <laughs> and Happy I to. thank you so much for your generosity in sharing your knowledge and your system with the world and also for your contributions to create the world where problems are just project. Sure. Have a great day. we we'll see you in one year. You too, Simon. Ciao. Bye-bye. The highest calling right now is to be of service. So the best sales is to not sell at all, but instead to serve the people you care about. Selling is telling. So who do you serve? And how do you serve them? The quality of this experience makes the difference. If you want our experts to go over your current sales funnel and really dive into the experience and the needs of your clients at each conversion point and make it a wow experience, then you are in luck because we have an exercise for you. Our 15-minute sales audit and one-on-one -on -one coaching with a world-class sprint coach. Fill out a couple of questions about your sales funnel and you will have clarity. In your personalized coaching session, you will get clarity on your number one bottleneck, three ideas on how to accelerate your growth, and a tangible sales map on how to double your conversions. Go to strategysprints.com sales and do our 15-minute free sales audit today.